Mm. What's up, everybody? It's your boy here to give you guys this review for Love and Hip Hop ATL uh, episode two. All right, uh, do it differently. Uh, kind of like I guess took all notes because I've been trying to do laundry and trying to eat, so I'm not. I want try to do the whole cut, cut, cut. But probably get back to the original format of how I've been doing videos next week. All right, so let's get into it. Um, so T, uh, so Tommy mad that Tierra came in with a smile. So her whole thing is, I can tell that by the smile on her face, Scrap did not tell her. Okay, cool. We're using deductive reasoning. Okay. Issue that I had is like, cause she was like, I'm a wipe that smile on her face. Why? You know what I'm saying? Like I was here for her. I, I was just here for the whole them going at Scrap because the issue is with him. But the fact that you feel so inclined to want to sit here and put your hands on this woman instead of checking your man, I don't really understand that. That defies all fucking logic to me. Somebody please let me know. So they're sitting down and she's asking, you know, uh, well, you know, because um, Tierra brings up her uh, her jobs and when she was like, I work for a Fortune 500 company, it was one of which was like she had to kind of like force it out. So I'm just like, hmm. Or not Fortune 500 company, but one of the biggest law firms in this country. Okay. Okay. Somebody lying, but you know, hey, it's what it is. Make, make your money how you got to make it, though. I ain't mad at you for that. And when she said that, then Tommy was just like, so when are you a mother? And it was one of those where, okay, shit's starting to go left. You know nothing about, uh, pretty much, I'm just paraphrasing, but you know the whole, I guess, don't know nothing about my life, this, that, and third. Do you know my child? Yes, I do know your child. I watch your child. I also know your baby daddy. I still in the dick whenever the fuck I want to. I told y'all. One more fucking episode. After, after tonight, one more episode. If they keep giving me Tyra and Amina <laughs> in fucking Atlanta, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Ta I'm not talking about me, y'all. I, I, I fucking refuse. Refuse. Anyway, they get to talking now. Tommy stands up and starts advancing. Now that's one of those where a, hey, because you know we'll hear later that you know she, I guess she kind of whatever she stands the fuck up. I fucking applaud Tierra for standing the fuck up because oh, the real shit. Like, unless you crazy as shit and you know that your level of crazy probably outmatched this level, this person level of crazy. And it's one of those where she's like, I'm going to sit here because I want you to hit me first so you can give me all the more reason to whoop your ass. I got that. Tierra don't look like she got them hands. So she stood the fuck up, which I was cool with that. Don't let a motherfucker, you know, like, let's even the playing field. Cool. Got it. She throws a drink. Why are we throwing drinks? Why? And when she did that, we could tell who had the hands, okay? It wasn't Tierra that had the hands. Tommy had their motherfucking hands. We saw. We saw. So Tommy got them hands. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Now, you got fucking uh, Mimi. Mimi was so mad. She was like, mm, I just came here because I just wanted to have a good time with my girlfriend. And then, you know, I see these two bitches over there, these hood rap bitches. I did not invite them over. And then they sit here and they fuck everything up. Mimi, I understand you bad. Just sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up because I'm not happy with your ass either. I'm not. Moving the fuck on. Kirk and Rashida, all that I'm going to say about them, because y'all already know I'm not talking about their ass. The whole issue at press comes up, and Kirk feels that, you know, I can't believe Scrappy sent his mother to do his dirty work. So I'm going to go check him. When the fuck did, you know, uh, Kirkisha get some balls? Okay, we'll see how this shit play out. I would be surprised, but because it, it'd be different if it was the whole, oh, re, you know, respond, watch, respond. I already know how this shit to fucking play it out. So, 
Uh, what else? Now, Tierra went to urgent care. Her fucking hand was messed up and shit. And, you know, she done her research on Tommy. Find out this bitch has mug shots and shit, all this other stuff. Her, see her son with her on social media. So she feels some kind of way. She was like, this bitch got 32 mug shots. I'm sitting there just like, Again, I think the only reason I could possibly watch this Tyra Peter and the Mina situation here because it is something slightly new, slightly more organic, or in the words of Nene Lee's, organic. But I don't know if I can. We'll see. So um, she pretty much is mad, you know, tosses the scrap. She gets in the feelings and one handed and all tries to fight him. Security pulls her away, and here. Ooh, excuse me. Here's the shit that fucking pissed me off is when she was just like, you will not see your son until you fix this. See, that's that fuck shit I don't like. Ladies, please, please. First and foremost, stop laying down with ain't shit niggas. Dude, stop, stop fucking, you know, laying down with ain't shit bitches. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, Ashley, no. Yeah, stop hang stop laying down when they shit bitches and impregnating their ass. Like it's one of those where both of y'all like if one in the equation is good, don't be fucking around with something that is less than that. Just don't fucking do it. Okay, put a condom on it. And hey, contrary to probably believe, there are female condoms that females can, you know, put on or put in themselves. And ladies, if you fucking sexually active and you don't carry condoms in your fucking purse. Uh-huh. Anyway, what I'm getting at. Uh, don't do that shit. That shit is not cool. You got an issue with him? You got an issue with him. But you never use children as a fucking bargaining tool. You never use children to sit here and... Like, children are not fucking pawns. And this is one of those where when you... She best, she best hope her son never, ever sees that fucking clip. Because that's some shit that will make a child resent you. So my father is not in my life. Granted, my father is raw dog and other bitches and whatnot, but I don't have a relationship with my father because you mad at him. So pretty much what he does to you does not, is not, how can I say? I'm trying to figure out the best way for me to put this. It's not necessarily a reflection of the caliber of a man that he is and what he can teach me, though it is. But still, you don't fucking do that shit. And I'm I'm going to slightly move on to the next thing before I smooth get all the way in my feelings and then blood pressure rises. Y'all know nigga got high blood pressure, so I don't want to do that. Mimi is moving. Don't really care. But she's not in a lesbian relationship. Now, again, I will give it to fucking Mona. Mona is on a mission to sit here and somewhat, you know, spread the equality. And, you know, make it to where us as black folk, we not sitting here, you know, arguing because the shit that we need not worry about what separates us and what brings us the fuck together. So you see that there was a whole lot of um, PSAs and I am actually kind of shocked that we didn't get the PSAs at the very end like they did with Love and Hip Hop. Uh, L yeah, Hollywood, L.A. Um, but... Chris says she identifies as a male. And Mimi is a girl. So because one identifies as this, and of course Mimi identifies as a girl, it's not a lesbian relationship. And Aaron was all in the midst trying to figure it out, asking questions. Do you put the dick down? Do you eat the box? All this other shit. Aaron, I mean, it's one of those where Aaron wants to know for a certain reason. And it's one of those where I respect Chris. Chris' whole thing is... is it's one of those where this is her friend that's not my friend, but at the same exact time, friend or no, nah, certain boundaries need to be put in place. And it's, and at the same exact time, Mimi should have stepped in just like, you don't ever talk to the person that I'm sleeping with and ask me or her about our fucking sex life. But again, that's kind of friendship that Aaron, and Aaron just trying to get the lowdown so she know what to do. See, Aaron ain't slick. Aaron just wait for that moment so she can swoop the fuck in and get the puss. Aaron, I got your number. I got your number. What else? Um, So, D. Smith, we uh, get introduced to her. She's walking the fashion show, but she's a producer and whatnot. Uh, she's uh, doing the fat, and the fashion show is for breast cancer. Bambi is also in there. So D. Smith meets up with a girl named Betty Idol. Betty Idol does not like Bambi. 
Bambi has been, I'm sorry, not Bambi. Betty has been working with Scrapplesship. Betty is a singer. Um, what else? And Betty mentions uh, the whole interview that Waka Flocka did and pretty much talks about him being homophobic. Um, and D. Smith is just kind of, mm, okay. Um, and like I said, who was it? Mimi, Rashida, Tammy, and Mimi, Rashida. Yeah, then that was it. They also were there. They had a little conversation. And, you know, Tammy has her own little clothing line and whatnot that she would like D. Smith to model for. I guess she has that uh, look that uh, she's looking for. Uh, now, allegedly, KK hates Sierra because apparently that, that's a snitching ass bitch. I'm not going to talk too much about it because one of those where it's just like, because my whole thing is this. I can't respect somebody like KK. And here's the thing. I really don't have a whole lot of respect for, like, on some real shit, when you allow yourself to let another motherfucker put a battery in your back because they too weak of a motherfucker to handle their own shit, I can't respect nobody in the fucking equation. I'ma just leave it at that. What else we got? Scrap and Jog at the uh, model call. Jog is spinning game on the assistant, and uh, the assistant gave him the digits. So we gonna see how that play out now. Kirk whole thing is <clears throat> since Scrap's mother came to this business establishment, I'm gonna come fuck up his business. Now it his issue somewhat is with Scrap, but it appears your issue with Mama D. So he should have stepped to Mama D. I know why he didn't, because he ain't for first and foremost again, yeah, y'all know how I feel about men stepping women all this shit. Y'all know how the fuck I feel about that. But at the same exact time, you ain't shit nigga. So you not finna step to her regardless because you already know no matter how hard you try to be, Scrap gonna put them paws on your ass. Put them paws on your ass. Um, So he decided to go ahead and he starts talking about the situation. You can tell Scrappy knew nothing about it. She just like, I know damn well this bitch did not take. Really, be, Really, be. So we all knew. And then... Scraps are like, I thought I told you not. And he was like, oh, so you didn't know? Motherfucker, you could have figured that shit out. You ain't have to fucking ass. You, I, I mean, c come on now. Come on, come on now. Contest clues, people. Contest motherfucking clues. Now, simple deduction. We don't need discernment. We don't need the Lord. Let's sit here and, sp and send a ministering spirit. We, we don't need all that. We could just. <sighs> dumb hoes, dumb hoes. And my whole thing is one, and he straight up put Mama D on front street, and Mama D feels a kind of way like, did this bitch just snitch on me? <laughs> That's how the fuck she felt. And my thing is, right then, when you saw that, you know what? Scrappy did not send her. The respectful thing would have been like, you know what, Pimpin? I came here under the wrong fucking pretenses. I do want to talk to you about something, but you know what? This probably isn't the place. And he probably should have left, but he didn't. So they get to talking and Scrappy feels some kind of motherfucking way. Just like, you finna come on here and fuck up my shit and whatnot. He was like, I'm fucking mad at you, man, because you supposed to be there for me. And I understand Kurt saying, I, it's hard for me to do that <clears throat> when my wife is still cool with your, it was, uh, it's cool with your baby mama. It makes shit uncomfortable, which is one of his where it is understood. But at the same exact time, why would you sit here and even tell him that you would be a fucking character witness? Why would you even fucking do that? And of course, and apparently Deb Adney uh, was a, a character witness for Scrap. So thank you so much, Deb. Thank you. Appreciate that shit. And then Scrap was just like, did you e did you even ever want to be there? He was like, deep down in my heart, not really. That right there, Scrap was fucking done. His ass like, you know what? Like, uh, you saw like that shit you know, on on my on the Mimi core, hurt me to my core. Hurt the motherfucker to his core, so he feeling some kind of way. They're done. Um, D Smith meets with Tammy, and D Smith feeling some kind of way about the uh, transgender comments that Waka had made. So her whole thing is, before we move forward, let me address the elephant in the room. And she was like, "Well, I've been transitioning for the last year." And Tammy's like, "What do you mean?" She was like. From male to female. You can see Tammy's whole... Like, you could tell Tammy's just sitting there like, awkward. Like, that was the look that was on her face. Like, she was like, this shit is fucking awkward. Yeah, it probably was. So, um... What else we got in here? Uh, do -do 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 um, they began to talk, and it was one of those where it was in reference to Caitlyn Jenter. 
Caitlyn got drug a lot over here, so we we don't even have to sit here and rehash that. Y'all can just go to them my, my trending topics, and y'all can see that. All right, so there's no need to even talk about the shit. But it was all, but it wasn't that. I mean, that was the context of the discussion. But he did say something about you know men not want to be men. And all this other stuff. And it's one of those where, I mean, it's just like, even though it is insensitive, you know, I mean, and I don't know, I, I don't know why, because I don't know if it did or did not come from, a, a, you know, a hurtful place, but everybody has their fucking opinion. I understand we want everybody to be tolerant. I, I got it. But I mean, let's, let's keep it 1000. Everybody has their own fucking opinions. And it's one of those where you can't push off what he said onto wifey. And if it's that big of, and I understand, you know, well, y'all, they are fucking you. And if it's that big of a deal, then yes, yeah, she should be like, well, I would like to speak to your husband just so I can get his opinion. Because again, working with you, I'm also working with him. So got it, get it, got it good. And Tammy pretty much clears that up. So, but um, D Smith still has her reservations about working with Tammy. Now you got Tommy and Scrap. Ain't finna do it. I'm not finna do it. I just got one question. I want y'all to go back. First and foremost, if y'all haven't watched the next 15, I, don't be mad at me. Just go back and watch it. When you get done watching it, go back and rewatch this scene with Tommy and Scrap. And y'all tell me that Tommy did not sit here, first and foremost, give you facially Tiffany New York Pollard. But tell me she did not sit here and channel this help. Tell me she didn't do it. I'll call you a liar. And then it ends with D. Smith and uh, Betty Idol and uh, Tammy. They're all talking. D. Smith wants um, Bay to pretty much kind of take her place and take this damn gig. And you can already see that Betty is not having it. And, you know, they're having their fucking words. And it's one of those where I can tell that, well, one, Betty is a bitch that can fight with her words. But she, she can't fight with them hands. I mean, this is one of those where it's evident. And I mean, the sh like the shit is just going level. You can see that D. Smith is kind of saying like, "What the fuck is going on here with these two crazy ass bitches?" Like that's how she's looking. And is it me or in the confessional did Betty not look like she was sitting here like she could have been a part of Christina Aguilera's Candyman video? Maybe it's just me. Y'all know I I see shit. I, I could be wrong, but Tammy couldn't handle it. You know, and it went from that to her getting up. And we saw a hand move. I don't know exactly what happened, but we will see it next week. But all I'm going to say is this, Tammy, I find it be so funny that you so quick to sit here and want to wrench around and grab a hole. But, um, yeah, we still ain't seen you get your revenge on uh, Ms. Uh, Hoseline Hernandez because uh, Ms. Hoseline got your ass all the way to fuck together because she said, when I see you, bitch, I'm going to get you. Uh huh, but that's not here nor there. So that is all that I have, you guys. This is like I said, y'all getting long reviews out of me. I don't know for how much longer because y'all know I like to hit it, quit, and get the fuck on a motherfucking day. But hopefully, you guys enjoy this review. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys next week, same time, same place for this same fuck shift. And uh, yeah, y'all have a blessed, wonderful, wonderful Monday evening. Peace. <laughs>